I'm Robert Scoble, you know, I'm really interested in wearable computers like this Google Glass. Well, there's a whole lot of vertical uh, markets that are coming up. Uh, we've already talked to the guys from uh, Recon Instruments who make the uh, o Oakley Airwave uh, uh, ski goggle uh, computer and their own jet sunglasses. And today we're uh, seeing inside the uh, helmet of Scully, uh, which is uh, making a little wearable computer inside a motorcycle helmet. And we're going to find out why you need one of those right now. Who are you? Well, uh, thanks for having me. I'm Marcus Weller, founder and CEO of Scully Helmets. And um, a little bit about my background is that I, I started as an industrial psychologist. So I did my PhD um, back in Detroit, in Wayne State. And um, I've always been kind of interested in automotive. Um, even as an undergrad, I was doing some research on intelligent transportation systems. Yep. And uh, it, was, it was a really you know, uh, exciting time because I learned about human factors. And that's really become this really interesting sort of space uh, as of late with wearable computing coming online uh, so strongly and all the optimism around it. It's really what you're seeing is this, this sort of divergence of companies that really get it in terms of human factors and the, and the companies that don't. And the ones that do, they really have this utilitarian sort of mindset and they say, you know, is this solving a real problem for the user? And when it does, they, they're able to generate real value. I've noticed that uh, both Oakley and uh, Smith are using the recon instruments in a ski goggle, and it sort of makes sense, right? If you're gonna spend $350 on a ski goggle, I was spending 650 and getting all these new features, like it shows you how fast you're going, yeah. where you are on the mountain and stuff like that, it makes a lot of sense. Is that the same case uh, for motorcyclists? It's the, a it's a similar thing, but you know the, the the issue is that you know motorcycle helmets for about the last four decades have been foam and plastic shells, um, and really that's what they've remained. Uh, and now we're at a place where we can actually transform the functionality of it. It's not just for protecting your head from hitting pavement anymore when you get in an accident. It actually has the potential to prevent the accident in the first place. And as you know, wearable tech innovators, it's it's sort of our imperative to uh, deliver technology that can actually you know save lives. So uh, a normal helmet is what, 300 to $800, something like that? Yeah, you're between three and $800 for your premium helmet. Um, depending on how much you value your head, it could be on the higher end of that. Right, and how much uh, does the Scully helmet add on or how much does the Scully helmet cost? Um, so we haven't set the price yet. We're gonna be releasing in spring. Our beta testers will know soon. Uh, we've had 35,000 applications for our beta testing program. Um, and so we'll be releasing information and qualifying those beta testers in the, in the next couple of months. So you're not just putting a little Google Glass in the helmet and calling it a day. What, what does uh, the sculling helmet do for a motorcycle rider? So it actually, uh, the first thing I think the most important use case is it has a 180 degree viewing angle rear view camera. So that allows you to see you know, everything in front of you, of course, but to the sides and back as well, all at the same time. And it's rendered on a transparent display that's right down Do we to have right. a video of what it looks like? I, I forget what you brought. I think we do, yeah. Uh, so what are, we, what are we seeing demoed here? So this is actually, you're gonna see Scully. when you first turn it on, it'll just give you some Hello. basic weather information. That's gonna let you know if it's gonna rain on you while you're riding. Um, and so that's just designed, what, is, what does a rider wanna know? Play now music. you're seeing the rear view camera, uh, and this is just showing you what's going on behind you. Um, the rider uh, has just given a voice command to listen to some music, so the music will come on. It's all voice control. Light traffic um, so ahead. So you'll be able to have a natural turn left here. Like talking to a person. Um, and so you'll see Call there, from you'll see Sarah. The arrows that'll come Continue up, straight on market. Turn, by turn, turn right. right. Those are really the two core killer apps, is having GPS navigation and a rear view camera gives you a really wide angle. Uh, and of course there are other apps that uh, people will be able to develop on our SDK. Um, do you have a front facing camera too? Because a lot of people are putting GoPros on their motorcycle helmets or on their bike themselves. Yeah. This uh, first uh, version is really around situational awareness. What I can say though about that without spilling the beans too much is that we've built a very flexible platform and so we're able to integrate a multitude of sensors uh, to this platform and uh, front facing cameras is, is certainly something that we're, we're considering. Are you considering different packages for racing bikes? Because uh, we, Rocky and I went out to MotoGP and watched uh, Valentino oh, Rossi 
uh, win a couple of races. Cool. And uh, their bikes are fully instrumented. They have a lot mm -hmm. of sensors on yep. their bikes, uh, yep. and they know exactly where they are on the track. So I imagine having that kind of information for a racer yep. would make a big deal. And plus, those guys are. Uh, far willing, far more willing to spend an extra $500 on a right. helmet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or more, yeah. Uh, yeah. We actually are talking to um, both Harley-Davidson as well as Ducati about sensor integration into the motorcycle. So it's a very important thing for us is to be able to take that information from the, from the uh, ECU or the control unit and uh, render that on the heads-up display in ways that are very simplified and very intuitive. And they, they help the rider just you know, do whatever it is, their, their uh, diversion activity better or their, or their job if, in the case of MotoGP. Yeah, you're wearing a Pebble watch. So I have a feeling you have a sense of what else is happening in the wearable space and how does that affect the motorcycle rider? Uh, the, uh, you know, we all are carrying iPhones yeah. or uh, yeah. Android phones, right? What's your uh, philosophy on how the personal cloud is going to evolve for a motorcycle rider? Well, you know, I think it's becoming almost commonplace that, yes, we have technology. It's small enough. It's light enough. It's, it's um, efficient enough that we can, uh, you know, carry it around with us. And now we're starting to wonder, you know, well, I have these pain points. I have these things that are actual real problems. Now, why isn't a wearable there to solve that for me now? Uh, it's almost like this uh, sense that um, we kind of have leapt ahead and said, you know, this should solve everything now. And, and we, our goal is to really keep up with that and to, and to stay in line with that optimism. I think that if we focus on solving those real problems, those legitimate problems that are easily articulated in a sentence, they're authentic problems, um, the wearable space can do some really amazing things and can bring the power of the internet to everything we do. I, are you thinking of uh, information displays that a motorcycle rider would need, that a car driver or a somebody else w wouldn't need you know for instance um i know there's three r roads into my house mm -hmm. and there's yeah. one that the motorcyclists all love yep. because it has a lot of turns and yep. it's fairly quiet yeah. it, would you say hey there's a great motorcycle route to where you want to go it'll take you an extra 15 minutes but you'll have more fun yeah we've had some great conversations with app developers um and we're kind of getting ready to seed our, our sdk but basically the idea would be is to um, both have Android and iPhone apps as well as apps for the Android platform on the helmet uh, that would do things like that. So one of the apps that was proposed and um, that we're looking closely at right now is it would, and I would love this in a car too, but it's, it's awesome for a bike. You can basically take all of your errands, put them into the app, and then it'll optimize them based on if you want to completely avoid cars altogether. Um, and just maybe hit the twisties on your way there or whatever it is that you want to do, it'll organize them based on your preferences. And if traffic changes, it'll reorganize them on the flyer. Let's say you go to your haircut and it takes an extra hour. And let's say now you're in rush hour, it'll just automatically re-optimize your route to help you run your errands in a, in a better way. Um, and, you know, I've, I've, I've thought about this, you know, a lot is that, and our team has really given a lot of attention to, you know, GPS navigation can be doing so much more for the user right now. It's basically a single function thing. It gets you from point A to point B. And I can't tell you how many times I have taken a wrong turn because my GPS, I wasn't able to map on what I was seeing to my actual world. Yep. Uh, it could be doing so much more. And I think it, it, the, the solution to that starts with human factors. When you, when you say human factors, what do you mean? By human factors, I mean human-centered design so that you start with the human. You don't start with the technology and look for places to impose that technology and then say, well, hey, there's solutions that are involved with this. You say, what is the problem that this person is facing? And what are the natural behaviors that they will already engage in? Capitalize on those natural behaviors and solve the problem using technology. Tell me about what is in the helmet uh, that makes all this work. Is it a, uh, are you buying this thing from Recon Instruments like Oakley is, or are you doing it all yourself so we developed this entire system proprietary in-house um, and it's a basically it uses an optical combiner with an optical stack and it creates a virtual image that's see-through as opposed to recon instruments which is a look at display this is a heads up or see-through display uh, and then that virtual image floats out in front of you about 15 feet away um, and it's, it's a translucent image the way that it kind of came about was that I was on my motorcycle in Barcelona um, a couple years back and I was involved in a motorcycle accident um, where I had looked to my right to read a street sign and just when I did that this little red smart car had slammed on the brakes in front of me so I looked back and I smashed into the back of the car and um, about six months later I actually had a dream that I was back on the motorcycle that day and I was fully expecting to crash but I had these GPS maps and they were floating out in front of me like this little see-through hologram 
And I remember thinking it was so awesome. I woke up and I tried to buy it. Of course, you, know, you couldn't buy it because it didn't exist yet. Uh, and, and so we started building exactly that. And we went through so countless iterations to get to what it looked like in that dream. But now it looks exactly like what I saw in that dream. How, how, uh, cause it's not everybody who has the skills to build software and hardware and, and put it into a product. Um, how did you get to the place where you understood how to do that? Well, I, I gotta say, I mean, it's just been by surrounding myself with people a lot smarter than me. I mean, that's really the, the bottom line. Um, you know, that's kind of the magic of Silicon Valley is that there's no shortage of people that are brilliant and energetic and, and willing to kind of go out on a limb and take a risk. I mean, go out on the limb cause that's where the fruit is. And, you know, I think it's really uh, been a, you know, a fantastic journey for us all. Um, and we've had to just kind of learn things. I mean, part of our culture at Scully is about... How you know, many what, people work there? Uh, so we have seven people in total. We have three design resources in Nice, France, and then the rest of our core team here in Silicon Valley. Um, but, you know, it, what's great about the team is that they're able to become an expert in something very, very quickly by focus. So it's, you don't have to come, become an expert in the entire field of, let's say, optics. But what you do have to do is say, what are the key things that matter to us? And then how do I learn everything about those things uh, to, to execute quickly and to iterate? And, and, then, and we have no fear around iteration. We 3D print probably 30 parts a day. Um, and we just make stuff and break it, and we just keep going. Something obviously is happening with computers to make a 49 gram you know, yeah. wearable computer possible. How did you find all the components and all the technology that you need to build your dream? It's really, really amazing that, you know, like particularly with glass, that you, you, you could think of like the early PCs, that they're these giant monstrosities. And now you can literally wear them like, like glasses. It's, it's, it's really amazing. Uh, there's a lot of consumer devices out there that, um, you know, you can look at and say, you know, how did they do it? How do we stand on the shoulders of giants and sort of look at... But there, there haven't been a lot of wearables today. Well, I'm not... At, you know, we have a few examples now, but yeah. until the last year, there really wasn't. And so something is yeah. going on in the OEM world that makes these components possible to purchase and yeah. put together mm -hmm. by a startup of seven people. Because yeah. obviously you didn't make the projector, you didn't make the, right. the, the right. chip exactly. in there, you yeah. didn't make yeah. the RAM, you didn't make the camera. Well, it's right. interesting though, because there have been a lot of these devices, it's just not in the consumer space. They've been in the military. And so now the question is, now there's, the consumers are sort of ready for this. Um, um, they're getting there. And I mean, people are still a little bit uncomfortable about glass. They're still, we still get the question like, isn't it distracting? It's, it's the opposite of distracting to wear this display because it allows you to see 360 degrees around you. It's like having ninjas all around you and you can see the ninjas to both sides and the one back while you're watching the ninja in front. It's um, the opposite of distracting. But what's, what's interesting about the space is that we're going to these suppliers that have traditionally supplied for only the military and they've been really, you know, cost prohibitive and weight constrained and all these uh, these other problems and we've said okay if we were going to do that in a consumer way how would we sort of demilitarize it and make it something that um can can sort of meet the appetites of the consumer yeah that's really really cool how much did it how much capital did it take to build your company to build a product like this it's getting cheaper and cheaper to do this every day um we've spent about a quarter million to get the company to where it is now um and uh, it, that might sound like a lot, but I mean, to, for what we've done, and now having you know 35,000 people signed up to to um, do pre-orders, it's it's pretty significant. So you can generate a lot of value on very little money um, by bringing in smart people. And I think you know location, location, location. It's it's definitely important um, to you know be in a place where you can surround yourself with people who are willing to kind of take a risk, work cheaply. Um, but you know we're getting we're getting real close here uh, to releasing in the spring, and it's a really exciting time for Scully. No, uh, it's it's going to be a big year for wearables next year. That's why I'm interviewing uh, Gary Shapiro, who runs the Consumer oh, yeah. Electronics Show. Yeah. I'm interviewing him at uh, South by Southwest, and um, it's going to be an interesting year to see what evolves in this world. I think you guys are smart because you're not trying to go against Google because that's going to be a thankless task for a, a lot of startups. You, you don't have the marketing yeah. distribution reach that Google has, right. um, but Google's not going to do a helmet <laughs> for motorcycle riders. So, right. Right. so if Rocky wants a new helmet, he has to buy a Scully helmet. <laughs> right. Rocky's a motorcycle enthusiast. So, um, 
where do you think this is going in the future? Are you going to put sensors like radar in the helmet to warn people that something's coming at them that they don't expect? I don't know that you need that in the motorcycle, do you? Well, at this point... In my I mean, Prius, I love it, but... Yeah, I mean, you know, IR, LiDAR, radar, all those are definitely, you know, um, they have potential. Um, but right now, there's, there's such a lack of situational awareness on a motorcycle. Uh, and there, there are these sort of accoutrements that we take for granted as motorists in cars, like just plain GPS navigation to know where you're going, or um, a really good, you know, mirror system that gives you a, a lot of awareness behind you. But, um, you know, now, like, the first test drive we did with the 180 rear view camera, I actually drove in a car with it. And what was crazy is that I saw out the back window and the sides at the same time. I mean, it's, like, amazing what you can see when you, you know, look at sort of what's the core problem that we're trying to solve and how do we really generate some significant value with the, with the tech. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see what, uh, where you guys take this display and what information services you're using. Is there a cell phone in there? Or are you talking out to the cloud as you drive along? Or? So the, it, it's conduit to the internet is via Bluetooth to the smartphone. Okay. So it has a standalone Android system with the maps on it already, and um, those maps will automatically update when you're synced to your smartphone or in your garage via Wi-Fi. But what's, what's nice is that... Um, you know, you, you can sort of leverage that power of the internet and you don't have to, you know, have, you know, tape a, a cell phone to the side of your head. Um, but it, it definitely has a lot of capability. The only thing that we kind of left off was the, um, was the modem. And that's really for, for power, um, power considerations. So it's all self-contained. There's a battery in here. And exactly. It, and it's running. Um, can, I, can I play Spotify music then? Uh, tell me about the platform that you're building and, and how open is that to mm -hmm. putting other things into the into the glass. So we're, plan on, we're planning on heavily supporting our, our SDK and so that's going to allow people to develop all different kinds of apps for it. But right now you can already um, just stream Pandora or Spotify via Bluetooth to the speakers in the helmet. So that's um, already a possibility. If you want some kind of visual aspect to it or to basically render that information on the Android platform in the helmet, um, there'll be app adaptations that people will develop uh, to do that. And we'll seed the development community with a few. Um, but we're really excited about what our, um, already our early adopters are talking about in terms of app development. There's a microphone in the helmet as yep. well? There's a boom mic in the helmet. Okay, and so can I make phone calls and yep. do all that? Yep, you can make phone calls. We're not going to do any text-based uh, stuff. So our entire uh, UI is all translucent elements, so the, the, the persistent rear view, you can see it in the video as well is a rear view camera feed, 180 degrees, it's always there, so you can always do a quick saccade or glance of your eye and see it. Uh, and then any UI element will be translucent over the top of that and won't obstruct it. Um, and so, and the, there will be no like text messages scrolling across or anybody emailing, it's all about situational awareness and that actually detracts from situational awareness. What we're doing, or we're trying to do with this wearable device in particular is to, to honor the moment you know, not detract or take away from the moment, but to serve the moment and help the user experience the moment more richly and fully. Interesting. Um, you know, it, uh, one of my friends already got a, a ticket for wearing glass while driving. Where do you think the law is going with uh, these new computer devices? Because uh, there is some confusion in the marketplace. Are these gonna mm -hmm. be allowed while yeah. uh, operating motor vehicles or not? I'm actually encouraged that, you know, legislators are looking at this and I think emergent policy is, is going to do well to address that there aren't distracting displays that, you know, are sending me emails on a heads up display while I'm trying to drive. I think that is, um, frankly, irresponsible. It's not, an, uh, it's not a good use of wearable technology. Um, and so, you know, like, but we cite a study that was um, done uh, as a collaboration between NHTSA and the Department of Transportation about the helpfulness of heads-up displays. And when they're done correctly, they can vastly improve reaction time and uh, help the rider be safer. And so we're very much about that. And, and, you know, this emergent policy, I'm actually encouraged in that it's going to ensure that people don't release stuff in the market that gives this a bad name. You know, that they're only going to let stuff through that really actually has an eye to human factors and uh, solves the problem it purports to solve without introducing new problems into the mix. I mean, I think any good sort of wearable technology 
it has a net negative amount of problems that it introduces to your life. Meaning yeah. it doesn't introduce, if it solves two problems for me, it doesn't introduce three or it doesn't introduce a big one. You yeah. know? No, it's, uh, it's real interesting. I've been driving with my glass and I, I don't care so much. I'm taking some risks that I, I know I am. But I, I find it's less distracting than looking down at the nav system that's in true. my car yeah. and that's legal. So why is, why is this illegal? I, yeah. I, I hope the lawmakers figure the, yeah. the right combination out. Yeah. Um, hmm. What else do we need to know about uh, Scully? Um, we are we are growing and we're we're looking to hire some software people. Um, software is really really important to us as a company. I mean, we've definitely built a hardware that uh, serves the software um, and is we're, we're looking towards creating a larger platform. Um, it's a very flexible system. There's a lot of things and a lot of problems that we can solve with it. And I think that really starts with you know the software for us to adapt this now to other use cases uh, in the in the future. It's going to come down to just the best of the best in software. And who invested in it? And are you looking for other investment par partners? We actually are uh, raising right now. We are in the middle of a funding round. Uh, we're angel funded. Um, and we're basically trying to sort of raise as little as we need to get to market and um, generate that initial revenue pulse uh, and then probably look towards uh, VC money at that point. Very cool. Yeah. Well, where do we learn more about it? Go to scullyhelmets.com. That's S-K-U-L-L-Y? Yep. Very cool. Thank you so much. My pleasure.